The market for heat pumps in commercial, I would say slightly in advance of that of residential. We're seeing more progress more quickly. Certainly in the new build sector, a lot of our clients are already moving towards low carbon heat, um, mainly as a result of seeking higher BREAM credentials or you know looking for better carbon performance. In the existing buildings part of the market, we're also seeing especially larger clients and blue chip clients looking towards low carbon heat, either as a result of ESG or, um, or, or other corporate objectives to minimize their exposure to, to energy price fluctuations and, and seek that sort of whole life running cost benefit which, which renewables can give. From a policy perspective, the direction of travel is clear. So we've got the net zero target enshrined in law. We've got some policy around new buildings and decarbonisation of new buildings and the private rented sector. However, there are some systemic barriers which we need to address fairly rapidly in order to maximise uptake and really get the market going. In the case of new buildings, we've got proposals on the table for the future building standard, which will look to enforce low carbon heat in the future. So the real challenge is decarbonising the existing building stock. So our current building stock is responsible for around about 30% of total greenhouse gas emissions, 18% related to heat and hot water. So it's very, very clear that regulations will start to really target those areas in the future. There are countless reports, papers and suggestions out there on how policy needs to change to adapt to you know, better um, reflect the needs of low carbon heat. They're generally condensed down to three key points. So you've got EPC reform, so which is Energy Performance Certificate. The way in which they're calculated is largely based upon running costs rather than carbon, so that needs to be looked at. And then you've got the potential to look at progressive policy, which uses the EPC as a basis for enforcement in the future. So we've had some proposals on that already in the form of private rented sector regulation. There are more wide-reaching proposals under discussion around using the EPC at different trigger points of building ownership to effectively push through a renovation. Looking then to the next one, which is spark gap or spark spread. That's the relative cost of electricity versus natural gas. Um, if we're moving to a largely electrified system, the price of electricity is too high. So we need that price to come down to incentivize and encourage business owners and operators to look towards heat pumps and low carbon heat as a, as a more attractive, affordable option. So last but not least is local support and local area energy management. Businesses will need specific support from their local area with people that have a knowledge of the housing and the building stock and what works best. So we believe that sits well with local authorities, but then also independent advice and support. So which systems work best, which energy systems might be available in your given area and how that all might tie together for you. With regard to funding, if we're specifically looking at heat pumps and low carbon heat, there are essentially two main schemes on, on offer at the moment. Firstly, we've got the public sector decarbonisation scheme. So this is open to public sector buildings to effectively gain a grant to help with either low carbon heat installation or energy efficiency measures. The public sector decarbonisation scheme is delivered by Salix Finance on behalf of government and and there's over a billion pounds of funding being associated with the scheme to be rolled out in phases over the next few years. So the phase four applications are due next and we expect guidance to be published this summer, so keep an eye out for that one. The second scheme then that's really relevant to heat pumps and low carbon heat is the Boiler Upgrade Scheme. Now this is a government funded grant scheme which is largely looking towards residential, so it gives a grant for deployment of heat pumps and a limited amount of biomass boilers. The reason I say residential is that there's an upper limit of 45 kilowatts thermal output for the combined system in a building, therefore some light commercial will be okay, larger buildings generally won't be eligible for the scheme. For these incentive schemes then, um, the Ofgem website is a really good starting point for information and eligibility criteria. Alternatively, speak to one of our sales managers, they can help point you in the right direction and give you tailored support for your project. Looking forward then to new legislation, there are two key pieces of legislation working their way through the system at the moment. Firstly, we've got the future building standard, which has just been through consultation. We expect it to be enacted in 2025. The future building standard will ensure that new buildings are constructed to a very, very high level of energy efficiency with good fabric and combine low carbon heat from the get-go. So effectively that means an end to fossil fuel systems in new buildings, everything will go towards some form of electric or low carbon system. As proposed, the future building standard will come into play in 2025. However, there are leading periods and what's called transitional arrangements in the planning system, which mean we won't necessarily see whole scale change for all projects until maybe 2025.
2026. The other piece of, of, of really meaningful legislation that's coming through is heat network zoning. So that means that the rollout and deployment of heat networks will be vastly accelerated across England and certain areas have been earmarked, certain geographic areas have been earmarked for rapid deployment of, of networks. What this means on the ground is certain types of consumer, whether it be a new building or a commercial building over a certain size threshold or someone with an existing heat network, will be effectively pushed into connecting to a wider network at local level. Essentially, heat network zoning will prioritise in areas where a heat network will be the lowest cost to decarbonise heat, it will prioritise that option and push it through. So there will be absolute mandates on, on building operators to connect under the certain principles that we already mentioned. So looking forward to um, heat network regulation, we have a specialist team dealing with this exact technology and, and solutions thereon. So please do get in touch and we've got people that can help.